Hello, let us go on with the second set of slides on this model on wire antennas, that it is devoted to, vector to the solution of vector potential equations. The first thing we have to do is to define which is the problem we want to aim at. So in this problem, the first thing is devoted to wire antennas, so it will be devoted to have a source point. In this source point, I will have a current density given by J and a current source given by rho. It's important to call your attention about the fact that all source points will be denoted by prime index. So I will have that the vector point, the vector position of this source point will be devoted by R but prime R. In addition, when I don't have sources, for instance an observation point, I will use of non-prime terms. So at this very same moment I have a source point where I have a current density and a current in, in a charge density and an observation point where I, where I want to find which is the electric and magnetic field. The solutions for this homogene, in homogeneous vector potential wave equations that is not the goal of this mode from here are given by this expression from here. In this way I can find out what, that, the elect, the, that the magnetic vector potential given by A in the time domain is given by this expression from here and if I skip to the frequency domain I will have an expression such as this one and this expression can be closely related to the, to the 3D Fourier transform of the current that is, being, that is feeding the corresponding source point. So I can have that the corresponding vector potential, the solution of the corresponding vector potential will be given by the 3D Fourier transform of the corresponding current density in the source point I am analyzing. I am analyzing. If I do the same for the corresponding auxiliary scalar, scalar electric potential, I can have that it depends on the 3D integral of the corresponding charge density in the source point I am analyzing at. And if I transform, if I go, if I skip, skip to the frequency domain, I will have that. This expression from here will be closely related to the 3D Fourier transform of the charge density that is feeding the corresponding source point. If I remove the dependence on the difference between the vector of the observation point and the vector of the source point, I can write down these two expressions from here in the way I am showing, showing at this point from here, where I have that the potential vector will be given by mu over 4 pi times the 3D, the 3D integral of the charge density multiplied by this function from here and the corresponding scalar function will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon times the 3D integral of the charge density and taking into account multiplied by the same function as in the previous case from above. If I am trying to pass, to skip, to the solutions of the corresponding electric and magnetic field, it is clear that I can summarize that the functions that I was making use of can be denoted as green functions and this green function is given by this expression from here. But when I have to go from the potential vector solution and from the scalar potential solution to the real electric and magnetic fields, I will have to take the derivatives of this function from here. So it's important for, important for me to get to know which is the derivative of this function from here. And the derivative of this function from here is given by jk v in k, the wave number, 2 pi over lambda, minus 1 over r times the corresponding spherical function that is given, v, given here in the radial direction. Well, the next point will be to introduce this derivative into the corresponding electric and magnetic fields. Then I can write down that the electric field and the magnetic field are given by these two expressions from here. And these two expressions from here says, tells us that the electric field is given by the sum of the electric field from the actual magnetic vector potential and the elect plus the electric field coming from the fictitious magnetic electric vector potential. 
In this way, I can have that for a general case, I will have that the electric field will be minus j omega times the corresponding magnetic vector potential minus the gradient of the electric scalar function minus 1 over epsilon times the curl of the corresponding electric vector potential. It must be highlighted that in the problem we are tackling at this very same moment, where I don't have any fictitious magnetic source, this term from here will have to be removed. The same happens from the corresponding magnetic field, which is given by the sum of the magnetic field coming from the magnetic vector potential A and the magnetic field coming from the fictitious electric vector potential F. And if I expand this equation from here, it results that it is 1 over epsilon times the curl of the magnetic vector potential A minus the gradient of the magnetic scalar function. And I call your attention once again that in the problem we are trying, at, we are tackling at this very same moment, this term will be fictitious and will not exist, minus j omega times the corresponding vector electric vector potential. And it happens the same that with the previous term in this equation from here. If I expand these two equations from here, I can obtain this set of huge equations where I can have that the electric field, radiated electric field, is given by 1 times over 4 pi epsilon the volume integral of all these terms from here that takes into account the derivative of the green function that I explained in the previous slide. If you pay, at, if you pay your attention into this, set of, into this set of equations from here, you can say that you can have some terms that are important quite close to the source point you are taking into account and, then, and that there are other terms that are and are called near field terms and that there are other terms that are important far away from these points quite close to the source you are considering. And the same happens for the magnetic field. So, I can say that these two expressions from here, there are terms that depend only on the inverse part of R, this one from here, JK, JK over R, but there are other terms that depend on the inverse part of the square part of the square term of R. This one from here depends on the, on the inverse part of the square part of R. This fact allows us writing these two sets of previous equations in a near field contribution that it is called ENF or plus a far field contribution or radiated field contribution. Let us expand these two expressions from here. If I go through the near field contributions, I can write down that this is the previous expression can be written in this way from here. This term from here, you can take into account that if I call your attention about the fact that at this very same moment I am only considering sources that are actual electric sources, I can say that this term from here can be removed because these two terms from here comes from a fictitious magnetic source, a fictitious magnetic current, this one from here, or from a fictitious magnetic source, this one from here. If I once pay attention to this part from here, I can say that this term from here is very similar to the Coulomb law in the fact that I am saying that the electric field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon times the integral of all the charges inside the volume I am considering over the square of R. And with the particular situation that it is multiplied by this exponential from here. But this exponential from here only denotes a delay. So this is this expression from here can denote the delay Coulomb law. And the same happens for this expression from here that denotes us and resembles us the biot savart law only with a small delay. So, equations 5, five and 6 are delayed versions of the Coulomb and, and biot and savart laws and at low frequency this delay is negligible and electrostatic fields are obtained. Finally, near electromagnetic fields are orthogonal in time with far electromagnetic fields. 
let us call now our, our attention to the far electromagnetic fields that came from the previous expression. If I only call your attention about the, the far electromagnetic field, I can say that this depends on k over r, and this is important when k over r are higher, are larger than 1. So the far field contributions can be denoted from here, and you can have that it is directly related to the charge current density and also to this term of related to the magnetic fictitious uh, current. This term will be removed, so we will have that the electric radiated fields will be mainly denote, will be mainly depend on this term from here. The same happens for the corresponding magnetic radiated fields. You can remove this term from here because it comes from the fictitious magnetic charge and you can remove this term from here because it comes from the fictitious magnetic current and you can have that the radiated field is mainly given by the vector product between R and J. So it's highly related to the Fourier transform, the 3D Fourier transform of the corresponding current distribution and the electric field depends on the 3D Fourier transform of the corresponding J distribution. Finally, these near electromagnetic fields these far electromagnetic fields are orthogonal to the in time with the near electromagnetic fields. Thank you very much for your attention and if you want to go on further details you can go through chapter 3 of Balani's book and chapter 3 of Kardama book. Thank you very much.